China and Russia are working overtime, building a massive $110 billion mega port in the Arctic. And while there's been barely any news covering it, I could count more than 30 different tugboats, dredgers, icebreakers, and construction ships deep in western Siberia working on it. Using historical satellite imagery, you can see the sheer pace of the progress these ports are being built. And it's not hard to see why this is so important to Russia. Take a look at a map of Russia's oil and gas production. Notice how concentrated it is in this region of Siberia. Historically, the gas would be transported to either the Gulf of Finland near St. Petersburg or to the Black Sea near the Mediterranean. Not only do these shipping routes put their tankers at risk of foreign powers, but the routes are incredibly long and indirect to countries like China who buy billions in oil and gas products from Russia. However, with this new Arctic Sea route, that's not the case. Not only does it cut the shipping time to China by almost half, but nobody even comes close to matching Russia's dominance in the region. Russia already has three nuclear icebreakers with another eight on the way, capable of breaking through some of the thickest Arctic ice there is, along with at least 40 new Arctic vessels in the pipeline. This should make it no surprise that the US Coast Guard, who currently only have three icebreakers, one of which was built in the 1970s, is pleading to Congress for additional funding for new icebreakers to help bridge this massive gap. Now, of course, me being the shrewd investor that I am, I set about trying to find out who might end up getting this contract for potentially up to nine icebreakers needed over the next decade worth billions of dollars. But this is where it starts to get funky. I did some digging and found out that back in 2019, when the Russian port was first announced, the U.S. government awarded Bollinger Shipyards a $1.9 billion contract for three new heavy icebreakers. What's interesting about this is that the Pentagon awarded Bollinger the contract even though they had never built an icebreaker before. And the reason behind this is that Bollinger's offer bid of just $1.9 billion was just too good for them to pass up. The bid was actually so low that other shipbuilders like Huntington Ingalls didn't even bother bidding against them. However, it appears that Bollinger bid off more than it could chew, with them announcing just last week that the first vessel won't be ready until 2028 at the earliest, more than five years later than they originally planned. So what I'm getting at is, with Russian and Chinese influence in the Arctic growing more every day, the Pentagon knows that they're going to have to bite the bullet and get more icebreakers under construction. And when you consider that the only other two companies that were considered for the original icebreaker contract in 2019 were Huntington Ingalls and General Dynamics, it stands to reason that at least one of them stands to benefit from any additional icebreaker contracts. Regarding which one will get it, it's hard to say. On one hand, General Dynamics stock has been bought by lawmakers nine times in a row. But when looking at Huntington Ingalls, they've been spending a lot of money on lobbying recently for Coast Guard funding related issues. Either way, I'll definitely be keeping an eye on this situation as it plays out. But in the meantime, to check out any of the data I mentioned in the video, check out Quiver Quant where I track it all a lot. Good luck and until next time.